Welcome to the Crypto on the Block radio show, featuring industry pioneers and CEOs across various industries in blockchain and cryptocurrency. Here's your host, Matthew Lochran. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Crypto on the Block. Again, this is your host, Matthew Lochran. Today, we have an excellent show for you. Today, we have the entire executive team from Airstays. Aristase is a blockchain-based organization ready to disrupt the travel and hospitality industry. And first off, I'd like to welcome Mark Italia, the co-founder and CEO. Mark, welcome to the show. Terrific, Matt. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. And Mark, I know we have a few other <laughs> folks here on our team. Uh, if we were wanting to just maybe giving a little introduction uh, for yourself as well as that, that would be great. Sure, sure. Um, as the founder and the CEO of Airstays, it's, it's terrific to be here. And the other other members of the exec team, Charles is running the, the uh, from Deedcoin running running the blockchain and the ledger leap for the for the cryptocurrency and our stay token. And Marco Soriano from uh, as the president of the global development and strategy, which is great. Everyone's on online for this uh, for this interview. Great, welcome everybody. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Matthew. Great. So, Mark, why don't you jump in and tell us a little bit, a little bit about yourself and maybe an overview of Airstay itself? Sure. In terms of myself, uh, being in the hospitality and casino travel uh, space for near on oh, 25, 30 years, both from professional qualifications to actual career and professional involvement, we've certainly seen a the, the space change over those years and certainly very, very intensely in the last two to three years with an innovation of technology, changes in demographics, um, con consumer habits. So the air stays effectively evolved from a combination of technology changing, uh, demand from guests and the hotel wanting to better serve their guests. So fast forward to where we are today, the air stays platform has brought together a number of uh, pieces of that puzzle being uh, bookings or, or an OTA, as they call, which is an online travel agent, combining that with digital key so people can use their phone to access their room without necessarily going to the reception, which is what we've termed skip the desk. Plus, when they use their phone and the app, there is what we call a concierge touch point, so they can use in-room services or even external services to the hotel as a guest travels. Well, that provides us uh, data so we can provide better services to the hotel and in turn they can better serve their guests. And now that we've introduced as another pillar to the platform our utility token, which we've referred to as Stay, uh, it creates a whole range of different uh, benefits to the, to the customer and the guest when they travel, uh, disrupting loyalty and uh, frequent flyer programs uh, and, uh, and what we call um, borderless currency exchange. In short... <laughs> yeah, I'd say that was in short. That's uh, quite the description. I love it. it sounds like you got, I know. Sounds like you got a lot of stuff there. going on. <laughs> <laughs> we we've got a handle I mean, on what, what what we need to do. Yeah, it sounds like it. I mean, obviously, it sounds like you guys are tackling a, a massive global industry. Um, can you maybe zero in a little bit about maybe the biggest problem within that industry that you're looking? Uh, maybe kind of air stays to, to fill in regards for a gap, disrupt, et cetera? Look, the, like most industries, there's always a gap to be filled or created. In this case, the technology and the cost of demand is already there. So it's it's meeting primarily the cost of demand. Hoteliers generally it's are quite are well. very slow to change. So uh, And to innovate, right. whether it's a capex or dollars and whatever, but it's also who do they partner with either internally to their organization or externally to get the right advice that fits their particular operation. So, you know, we're positioning ourselves as sort of champions of that change. Obviously, we're a business and we're commercial, but it's also leading some of that change and um, hence the Estes uh, platform. Absolutely. And it sounds like kind of what you guys are doing is very interesting. Um, you're really reimagining uh, that hospitality market through blockchain integration and ecosystem. So, I mean, what do you think the impact of this will be on the hospitality industry? Well, I, th I think it, uh, 
it'll be, it, it is a redefining of the way guests and hotels interact and the way uh, guests travel. And there's, there's no illusion that the guest and the hotel still need to be connected and interact. It's whether, whether they're using the traditional phone on the, on the desk in the, in the room, using their phone, using their tablet, you know, not necessarily going to reception. So there's still always going to be a need for interaction with what we call our personal touch. It just doesn't necessarily have to be face-to-face. So I think the biggest change is how the, that interaction proceeds and then you know, the technology that is around that. So, you know, that's, that's I think, what, what's really important. And, and part of that change is the guests want it. There's been fragmentation in the industry as part of that. And you've seen platforms evolve over time, like, you know, uh, book, uh, like um, OTAs uh, and other, other forms of, of technology and innovation. Here we're just bringing it all together. It's like we, we've got a, an investment into a company called Bellop in the US, which is uh, an aggregator for share writing. Um, so, you know, through our app, there'll be an API into that and you can see all, all in one spot, um, whether it's Uber, Lyft or Get or whoever it might be, uh, all in one spot. So it just saves the traveller time and energies when they travel. Yeah, that's a really good point. So I noticed that you guys seem to have quite a few different partners listed on your website. Um, so I'm not sure, maybe Marco, is that something that you kind of oversee as well kind of with the global strategy piece um, in regards for you know, determining your know, partner for the platform itself? And maybe you might want to mention some of the ones that you guys are kind of hooked up with already. Like we just heard about Bellhop. So yes, this is definitely a global strategy when you're looking at all the elements that support tourism today, right? Tourism as an industry relies on not just the booking or the access to having a digital key, but transportation is very important, as well as gastronomy. Whenever you get to a given location and you want to taste that local dining or interna- international dining experience. And another segment that we're looking at is activities, whether they're popular or cultural. So we're kind of uniting or synchronizing all of these points of interest to the traveler, to the, to the traveler for business, to the traveler for leisure. So strategically speaking, we're not just partners with these companies, but we have already invested. We already are investors and part of their strategy still, again, global. So it's just creating the good environment, you know, where the traveler really has a good experience, enjoys using these technologies and uh, throw the token in the mix just to create a global currency that hedges onto all those different costs that nobody likes, right? Exchanging currencies between countries, using uh, intermediation of the banks and all, of, you're just losing value all the time. So we're trying to fix that problem. Yeah, that's a really good point as well, right? So if I, if I look at, you know, my own travel experiences, right? I travel extensively for, for business, for pleasure, uh, it's always a headache when you have to say, okay, well, where am I going to eat tonight, right? Where, you know, what's what's going on from the events uh, perspective in, in the region? So it would be quite nice to kind of, you know, have a lot of that taken care of for me or suggested for me, you know, by the platform. And if you're saying all these people also accept the same currency, it makes it that much easier, um, as well as the fact that it sounds like I get to get rewarded for actually using uh, the app and the currency as well. Absolutely. And that's, that's the rewarding point system that we have in place, the mechanism, right? The mechanism that allows you as a traveler, so, so that you, the very first time you check in a hotel, the very first time you visit that restaurant, the first time you take that ride in that given location, you're going to get tokens in return. The first time you give a review for that location or that specific technology you were using, you get tokens in return. So you're spending money but you're getting money back, you're getting value back, and that's reusable within our ecosystem. And that's, I mean, I think every traveler is just dying to understand or have this in their hands. Same way that Sky Miles were introduced or any type of point reward system with different hotel chains around the world. The only difference here is that we're doing it for everybody. We're doing it for the small, the medium-sized hotels, those chain hotels, and everybody else involved in this ecosystem. <laughs> for someone again who travels, right? So I have to have my Hilton Honors, my Hyatt One, Riyadh, right? I have my my Amex points, uh, all the different frequent. 
you know, United or Delta. Basically, what you're telling me is, you know, even as a business traveler, I can kind of use that information and leverage your platform to simplify my life. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you want to give those points to your wife, for, all, <laughs> for sure. That would be very nice and very kind. Yeah, but that is exactly what it is. Allowing you to have this freedom of, you know, just traveling the world and being able to have these reward points in, in, in into this ecosystem any way you want. And then mind you, these are tokens, digital tokens. So you can gift them, you can transfer them, you can reuse them in any way you want. And that's the advantage of it, what makes it unique. You can it. And you can redeem them, redeem them as well because they're actually a token that can be exchanged. Right. In the secondary market, that would be, if that's what you want to do. But I, I see people not doing that much, depending on what kind of investor you are, because that's the whole point of this, is be, having a utility token for the very first time that could be used as a global currency. But if you choose to redeem it in a secondary market, for that matter, then, of course, you can benefit from that as well. Absolutely. Again, it gets up to you guys. Giant industry, uh, so many different touch points. I would love to maybe you guys can narrow it down. Like, what really about your offering kind of excites you guys the most? Mark, you want to take that? Well, I, I, well, I, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it, what excites uh, you about our offering? <laughs> yeah, what, what we're enjoying doing at the moment is obviously we pulled the pieces of the puzzle together. The offering to us. We, we're certainly feeling that we're a first mover in this space uh, and the depth of the team uh, and the seniority of the team, but we've also got, you know, social media, we've got IT, we've got hoteliers, we've got um, crypto um, uh, advisors. We're finding that just, just by the sheer fact of being in this in this space and, and doing what we're doing, there is a real market fit. So I think just the sheer fact that we're doing this and taking on have achieved so much so far and the depth of the team Unfortunately, Eric couldn't join this one, but you know his his experience and insights from you know as a co-founder of Open Table uh, and you know the trans transferability of of the utility token. It, it, I think it's a combination of what we're doing, and that's really really exciting uh, in the, in the travel space. It is a it, it is a massive market. It's global. Uh, it touches pretty much anyone who travels with and and within that demographics, whether it's corporate, family. Couples, uh, individuals, you know, five star to two star. You know, any, any, everyone and anyone can use what we're doing. So that, you know, the combination of all that, that's pretty, 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 pretty exciting from our point of view. Yeah. So I, I can add to this. For example, down in Miami, I had a conversation with a group of family offices that are building hotels down here. And one of their main interests is, you know, not only to be a part of this platform, but be also investors into it. So that tells you that the offering itself, it's, it's attractive, not just to the users of it, the travelers, but also to the hotel owners, the investors, today's investors in this given ecosystem uh, worldwide. So um, <clears throat> we're, we feel very comfortable with presenting this product and this line of services, not to mention that. The teams that we have are all global. I mean, we're everywhere right now. Talking to somebody in New York, there's the guys down south in Florida, uh, Australia, the UK, down in Brazil, down in Ecuador. I mean, we're, it's just great to see this level of enthusiasm and energy going around in, in a sector that defines industries, right? The industry of tourism is extremely important for the economics of any given country around the world. This is something they're always promoting because they know it's important to put themselves out on the map in everybody's radar. And we're helping in that process. And, you know, so it's very, uh, it's just great. It just feels really great to be a part of this. No, oh, again, it sounds fabulous. I'm a traveler, so you got a, you got a fan here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what you just kind of touched on, right? Even building a global organization, right? I'm I've sending you some tokens there. just for saying that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think you have, you have the right mindset, though, and what you're saying when you're building a global organization, right? But you're also building an internal culture with that piece as well. 
uh, is a lot of enthusiasm, especially coming from the sea level that you guys are bringing on board with people with specific expertise. Um, now, obviously, when we're looking at businesses and we're talking about businesses, you know, not everything is you know rainbows and sunshine and unicorns. There's also going to be outside threats as well. I mean, what type of kind of risk assessment have you guys started looking at? Or maybe you can talk about this you're seeing um, or to your company if you have, have gotten that far yet. I might jump on that one, Mark. I, I think, look, there are, there are fundamental risks of the company uh, being somewhat of a, a new kid on the block uh, is obviously having sufficient capital resources to, to you know, undertake and roll out our, our roadmap um, and, and hit our milestones. So, look, there's obviously that. There's always that fundamental risk, but that, that's, that's across any company or business that's uh, evolving and developing, having sufficient resources, whether it's you know, financial, people, ideas, uh, IP, whatever it may be. But you know, I think we've got enough enough um, uh, resources for what we need to achieve, and hence the the ICO and other uh, traditional capital raises that we've we've flagged along the way. Uh, obviously, com- competition uh, in in the different in the different uh, spaces. The mar- you know, the market's big enough uh, for a number of players. We feel um, we've got our uh, different edges in there. Um, the way we've patented some of the processes, we've got our IP registered uh, domains around the world. Uh, the team. Um, so, you know, we try to mitigate some of the risks as we go forward. We, we feel we've, you know, first mover advantage so we can get into the space and, and, and position ourselves as the good guys. For example, OTAs generally charge anywhere from 15 to 25%, 30% in some regions. We're hitting the market at 8 and 10%. So part of our revenue models, we, you know, we're coming in at a, at a, what we call a fair and reasonable rate. So we should be able to adopt uh, or attract um, the hotel is as part of our onboarding. Uh, our CTO is, uh, we have a channel manager, a strategic alliance. So our, our ability to onboard hotels, and we actually have a big backlog of hotels to bring on board. So that's inventory. You know, so that's in, an important part of the um, the structure of the industry and our ability to penetrate that. So, you know, we, we thought we've whiteboarded this out for quite some time and, and now we're rolling out in terms of um, making all that happen. Yeah, 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 and, and a bit more on that risk factor. You know, of course, we're looking at the vendors being the ones that have to accept that, and not only accept it but understand it. And that's part of the job that I have and under my responsibilities and functions. You know, the strategy, the communication part of it. So we're well aware of the fact that cryptocurrency, the ICOs, and every everything that is out there need a lot of legitimacy attached to it. And I think with the big players that we have in our team and the experience and all of that, we're going to be actually helping out that industry alone too. So it's not just the tourism, but it's also this FinTech and PropTech movement worldwide, which we all are well aware, it's just astronomical, right? This year alone, the first quarter of the year surpassed last year's uh, money that was raised. I mean, we're looking at, at a very disruptive market with ICOs and cryptocurrencies alone. But the big question always is, is it real? Is it really doing it? And it's happening. So whether you get on the ride and you enjoy the train ride or not, we're there to help people understand that companies like ours will be paving the way to a better understanding of what that market is all about too. And just an extension no, I think that was of a that great, too, Mark. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Mark. No, that's that, that absolutely. Yeah, no, and just an extension to that is, uh, you know, the legitimacy in the in the in this in the ICO space. I mean, uh, as we're probably unusual that we've actually built out our a good portion of the platform already done deals to bring in our strategic supply chain partners or and or made investments into them. So we're we're certainly ahead of the the curve, sort of on the on the up on the hockey stick. So in terms of our development and, and de-risking, so it's not just a, an ICO with a to roll out an, a concept. We're actually in the marketplace. So this is really more of a an expansion and growth story. So you know, sort of it's it's slightly different, but quite you know fundamentally important. No, I agree. That that's a, that's a very good the point as well, right? So uh, as we have seen, right, this this year alone, we've seen. 
in in this blockchain you know, space uh, again via you know fund fundraising mechanisms like an ICO and with that though we're also seeing a little bit of maturity in companies that are now trying to come into the space a little yourselves right so if I look at you guys tier one players involved you're looking at you know a, a revenue model and a business model that makes sense on a global scale uh, so there's a lot of positive things that we're looking at so one thing i would want to maybe touch a little bit on though as well is actually the, is the actual blockchain so i'm not sure charles if uh, you might want to you know kick in on, on this question but uh can you maybe let us know i mean maybe what type of chain you guys are building on um kind of why'd you guys choose that uh, yes, absolutely. So the uh, state token has been launched on the Ethereum chain, but the uh, specific protocol is a little bit newer. We're doing an ERC-223 protocol, and it's uh, still back compatible with the ERC-20 wallets, uh, the standard you know, transactable tokens that people are used to on the chain. So uh, anyways, all of the positive functionality of you know, being able to use this in a third-party app, you know, of course, the ownership that comes with any cryptocurrency, um, all of that is there, just uh, you know, with a more fast sending process, less, uh, you know, I guess issues with the errors, and also much more efficient gas. Uh, the most important thing about this, and the reason it's on Ethereum, is for the stability. Uh, just like travelers, they want to get from A to B, and of course the uh, tokens, they need to get from A to B as well. Uh, what we're building here is a, a new way for you know the travel industry and travelers themselves to interact and a whole community around it. So uh, that cycle is very important. You know, for example, when a uh, when somebody is booking through the app, they're going to get a portion of say, uh, you know, to, for the booking itself. When they post a review after it, they're going to get another smaller portion of stay for that process. And it's the hotel's job to win that stay from them. Uh, the whole idea here is being able to, you know, take that application that's going to be connecting with the hotels, opening doors, potentially doing room service, you know, parking, all of these applications. And the hotel is going to be able to offer deals on these uh, things, deals on the bookings themselves uh, for the stay token. And, of course, the hotels need the stay to win better uh, uh, bid, better placement through the actual booking app. Um, remember, so it's very easy for the hotels to come on. Uh, simply, it's an 8% commission as opposed to the market standard 25% commission for selling their excess uh, room inventory. So, anyways, number one, they can come on for price alone, but that stays what's going to let them lead the new market. Uh, you know, being able to be number one is about having those positive ratings, uh, being able to interact with your guests and being able to use the stay on the hotel side uh, to actually get the better placements and, you know, grow their business. So anyways, this whole thing just changes the way and the actual incentives which are more revenue and profit based now to actual positive consumer interaction. So that said, the stay need to move around a lot. And for that simple reason, we need, you know, a nice, stable network with the uh, largest node base. So that said, uh, as technology advances, you know, this builds a sub-economy for travel completely. So, you know, this needs to go, of course, in the most stable chain. And as something is faster, a proof of stake in the future, you know, it's very simple to uh, take a stake into a future technology. So, but either way, stability is key. Yeah, it sounds like uh, you guys have just gamified the hotel manager's job uh by your by your platform this is what it really sounds like as well yes absolutely Beautiful. But more important <laughs> yeah yeah but more exactly so we're actually promoting hotels that think i guess outside of the box in better ways to interact with their guests uh, which right now doesn't exist i mean if you check into the hilton you get your room key you know you go to your room and i mean even ordering room service dialing through all the extensions all of this is a very difficult process people don't like to interact with their hotel again they only do it if they you know, lose a, a bag or a room key. Uh, this this changes the whole way that works and it makes that rewarding for the guests, but also for the hotels as well. Man, this is uh, again quite quite the interesting platform. And uh, again, I know we've uh, the world uh, to be on on the show today. And uh, what I really would love for you guys to do as well is you kind of share with our listeners, uh, where's the best place for them to actually learn more about airstays? The place where you can learn more show. about this, I got, I mean, yes, we're, we're right now started our campaign with VR and marketing. So we're doing a mix of things, uh, explaining on television. Uh, about the blockchain and and also what we're doing in that space and how we're going to be helping promote uh, tourism worldwide. So one of the strategies 
it's doing a up down strategy where we're working with ministries directly with the ministries of tourism in given regions. And one of them right now, what is extremely active with us is Latin America. Latin America wants to be promoted in tourism the same way that Europe is. So there are some challenges uh, that we are seeing right now, but we're trying to help them. You know, we've become, in a way, advisors to these regions, to these ministries of tourism as well, to let them understand how technology can potentially be the way to bring more people on board or welcome new tourism to it. Uh, I tell you one thing, from working with Eric, who, who's here on the call as well, being the founder of Open Table, we've learned a great deal of things that were not meant to take place back in back then when Open Table was introduced to the world in 1998. So we have a pretty good, uh, you know, uh, set of rules and guidelines to follow. And I think Eric, you can you can emphasize a bit more or elaborate on these matters too from your experience. Yes, it's, it's uh, basically a similar inventory play, and, and we're following the same path, except we have uh, much more at our fingertips now. Uh, the, the rewards, the, the the dining experience, and the course uh, helping out, as you mentioned, the Latin America, the, the Tuesday in inventory was a big, big thing because there, there was no price discrimination. So basically, Tuesday inventory was unsold, and Friday nights were basically everyone was paying the same. Uh, fee and there's the you know the uh, the publishers in this case are going to be able to take advantage and of of this technology and we're basically working around the the entire stay so rather than just gift points or uh, miles or anything like that it's the it's a whole ecosystem we're basically building the Nasdaq of, uh, of of the stay is what we've been throwing around so yeah that those are some of the things we're working on um, it's quite quite an infrastructure that we have to build so. Uh, and, and a lot of this has been in progress for the last two years. So um, got, a, yeah. got a good start people. on it, and it's going really well. Empowering people, man. People helping people. This It just feels good, you know. And, well, let's uh, take it out of the, uh, <laughs> the, the, yeah, we're the good guys. We're on the publishers, and the people want to feel empowered instead of being taken advantage of by I'm a I'm a bad like boy. I'm a bad boy, by the way. But I am part of these good guys now, so it makes me good, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, so, just so uh, our our listeners understand and know, you guys are uh, are about to, I guess, start a uh, a crowd sale, right, if you will, um, you know, here in the market in an ICO. Um, is that you know international? Is that uh, U.S. credited? Have you, can you share any information about that as well? Sure. 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 Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, we've got, yeah. Yeah, we've got um, uh, through, uh, to be SEC compliance in the U.S., uh, the legal team there working through what needs to be um, um, put onto the to, into the terms and conditions from the legal side, so that'll take a, a little bit more time for US accredited investors to, to jump on board. Um, and, and once that's done, that'll be uh, pushed through to the, the portal and the, and the and the token website and whatnot. Uh, the rest of the world is pretty much ready to go, and we're going to be launching I think Friday or Monday uh, through our pre, uh, private sales and pre-sales with the UK, Australia, Europe, uh, and and pretty much everywhere else. And we've got interest from a uh, whole range of different uh, sectors, whether they're crypto funds or general funds, uh, family offices, um, well well positioned and well vetted uh, subscriber bases. So we're pretty pretty positioned to to launch it and uh, and see what kind of traction we get pretty quickly. So you know we've heard some interesting stories of four billion dollars being raised on something that no one actually knows about. Uh, and to other stories where they've closed out within a day or, or half an hour. So in terms of the traction, um, given where we are and what we're offering, you know, it, it's exciting times of where we are. So we're right at the cusp of launching and promoting and then and we'll see how we go over the next probably week to three weeks uh, ahead of the, 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 the crowd launch of, uh, I think it's slated for the 21st of uh, July. Uh, that's great. I mean, very, very exciting times. Uh, I'm sure going on right now within the organization. Uh, and then, just so uh, people can understand, what is that actual token website uh, that they can get some more information about Aerostasia? 
Yes, the link to the website itself is uh, HTTPS, and then it's uh, token.airstayswithaz.com. And that's got the, uh, the white paper on it and the ability to whitelist and also learn more. Perfect. I'll make the uh, so we can send some folks right over there because um, I'm sure there's going to be quite a bit of interest um, after hearing <laughs> this show and uh, what you guys have going on. Uh, but first, of all, again, wanted to, to thank everybody for uh, making the time today uh, to come on the show. I know we have people from that are in Florida right now, in Australia, in, in California, it sounds like you know, all over the world uh, that you guys are calling in from. So again, I appreciate that. And again, I want to thank you all, everyone, for coming on the show. Love it. Thank Beautiful, you. Beautiful, guys. Thank you. Thank, yeah, thank, thank you so much for having us, Matt. And uh, Terrific. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You, and uh, everybody, again, uh, absolutely. And uh, again, until next time, everybody, this is Matthew Locker from Crypto on the Block. Talk to you soon. Thanks for tuning in to the Crypto on the Block radio show with Matthew Lockren. Please subscribe, like, share, and comment. Tune in next time.